What's going on, everybody? Whoa, wait, that's not Yam's voice, or did he finally hit puberty and not drink a cup of coffee this morning? No folks, it's not Yam, it's actually Spite, and I'm here today to shed a little light on a subject near and dear to my heart, muscle cruisers. I guess we'll see how this goes, and maybe you'll be hearing more from me, but let's get into it. Muscle cruisers inhabit an interesting niche in our little world of two-wheeled death machines. Since not unlike the muscle cars of the 70s and 80s, it's all about strapping a big engine to something comfy and hanging on for dear life as it tries to rip your arms off. In usual yammy noob fashion, I've collected seven muscle cruisers, but to keep y'all on your toes, I figured I'd run them down in order of my personal preference. Let's do this. Number seven is the Triumph Rocket 3. What the hell? The Triumph is in last place? Clearly this dude hasn't ridden enough triples yet. And yeah, the Triumph takes the last place slot on this list, mostly for being a Diavol on steroids. I mean, it's gotta be the biggest triple in the world, displacing an enormous 2458 cc's, or 150 cubic inches, and you'll see why that's important in a little bit. That equates to only 165 horsepower and 163 foot-pounds of torque. I'm no engineer, but it seems to me an engine that big needs to be making way more power. The new 2020 styling is super aggressive, and it's reportedly lost 88 pounds over the previous model, which, let's be honest, most cruisers sorely need. You can get it in a touring spec with forward pegs and handlebars swept back for comfort, or in a sportier R trim with mids and a pitched forward riding stance. But with the price tag of $22,600, it's a tough sell. Moving on. Number six, the Suzuki Boulevard M109R Boss. Oh yeah, now we're talking. This is a bike so manly that it needed three names to contain its sheer raging testosterone. For those of you unaware, Suzuki makes a bike for literally every type of squid. You want to warp through time and space? Go get a Busa. You want to claim you did 186 miles an hour on the freeway last night in flip-flops? Grab yourself a Gixxer 600. Want to absolutely annihilate that Gixxer bro off the line in comfort and style? Boulevard M109R Boss. For those of you who are wondering, BOSS stands for Blacked Out Special Suzuki, which is kind of lame, I'm not gonna lie. Could they not come up with something catchier? I mean, they've got an entire marketing department trying to rebrand Gixxers from the official bike of the Florida man to the best budget superbike. I'm sure they could spare an intern for an afternoon. But I digress, the M109R makes 128 horsepower and 118 foot-pounds of torque, which is not bad until you remember the bike weighs 764 pounds. I'm gonna be straight with you, a lot of people keep telling me that the M109R is the best thing since sliced bread, but aside from an amazing name, the dash, the engine, and the overall styling leave a lot to be desired. You want to know what doesn't leave a lot to be desired? These new giveaway bikes we got. We've got the Triumph Street Triple R, the Yamaha XSR 700, and the KTM Duke 390 all being given away for free. Seriously, for free. To enter, click that link down below, head over to yamminoob.co and select a subscription tier to start earning entries. At the $20 tier, you'll earn 200 entries a month, and that's 10x on the dollar. Were you mad at me when I didn't do the 3x3 mod on the DRZ, or when I bashed those bullet connectors again? You can literally write me your dissertation on the benefits of inferior connectors in the Discord. That, or you could just hang out with hundreds of other squids. That works too. And for those of you with a crippling fear of commitment, you can head over to yamminoobmerch.com and pick up some of our great merch. Every dollar you spend there will get you an entry to win the bikes. Don't miss out on our best giveaway yet. Click that link in the description below and head over to yamminoob.co and get entered today. Now let's get back to these muscle cruisers. Number five, the Victory Octane. The what? Victory is an unfortunate bit of collateral damage in Polaris's war on Harley. They made some badass cruisers, but when push came to shove, Polaris wasn't selling Victories like they sold Indians. But anyway, what about the bike? The best way to think of the Octane is like a scout with teeth. A lot of the design elements are shared between the bikes, but an upgraded suspension, better cams, and performance mufflers straight from the factory really make the Octane go quite a bit faster. 
It displaces 1179 cc's, which is 40 more cubes than the Scout, and makes slightly more power at 103 horsepower and 76 foot-pounds to the Scout's 100 horsepower and 72 foot-pounds of torque. At 10,000 bucks, the Octane is also the cheapest on the list, but it's the slowest, accelerating from 0 to 60 in 3.6 seconds. It really leans more into its cruiser heritage than any drag bike influences. The real shame is that Victory had teased an even beefier version of the Octane, but left the world hanging when Polaris sacrificed them to the cruiser gods in the hopes that Indian could one day dethrone Harley. It's a real shame too, because personally, I find the modern Indian lineup, with the exception of the FTR, to be largely unremarkable. Number 4, the Yamaha VMAX. Okay, now this one is really cool. One day the folks over at Yamaha thought it would be cool to not make an R1 for 5 minutes, and they cranked out this beastly V4 muscle bike. When it originally came out in 1985, it rivaled the original H2 in terms of body count, because the bike was way too fast for its brakes. In 2007, they re-released it with stiffer forks, brakes not made out of cheese, and a 1,679cc 70-degree V4 that puts down 173 horsepower and 113 foot-pounds of torque. A fancy chip-controlled intake shortens the intake system down from 150 millimeters to 52 in order to keep power up at higher RPMs. This thing has a bunch of other electrical systems and computers that make it even more complicated than my VFR. One major drawback of this bike, though, is the range. The V4 uses so much gas when you throw an exhaust and a tune on there that you might struggle to reach 100 miles on a full tank. But, hey, we're talking about drag bikes, right? Who cares about range? Now, number three is the Ducati Diavel. I might be a sucker for an American V-Twin, but seriously, listen to this bike for a second. Yup, that's why it's here. That Testostrata engine sounds downright mean. It just so happens to be coming from an acceptable motorcycle. Okay, it's not acceptable, it's goddamn brilliant. The new Diavels come with a big old TFT dash, comfy yet sporting ergos that won't have you scraping pegs, and lest I forget, a 1262cc Testostrata V-Twin that makes 157 horsepower and 95 foot-pounds of torque. It'll do 0 to 60 in 2.5 seconds, which makes it the fastest bike on this list. Spoiler alert. Testostrata refers to the valve system, which in classic Ducati fashion uses an overly complicated and expensive desmodromic variable valve timing system, but hey, when your bike sounds this good and you can get up to a frightening 169 miles an hour, you can look back at the competition with a smug air of self-satisfaction. Just make sure you weep quietly when you get that service bill or they might take your bike away. Number two goes to the Harley-Davidson V-Rod. Now this is probably the single most famous model Harley-Davidson has ever made. Show of hands, who doesn't know about the V-Rod? See, no one's raising their hands because everybody knows about it. But just as a quick little refresher, the V-Rod was co-developed with Porsche of all companies. With that came the first Harley to use a 60-degree V-twin, dual overhead cams, and liquid cooling. For those of you out there on fast boy bikes, liquid cooling was literally space age technology to Harley at the time, and the time being 2001. There's approximately 100 different models of the V-Rod, from the VRSCSE Screamin' Eagle CVO V-Rod, to the VRSCSE2 Screamin' Eagle CVO V-Rod, to the VRXSE V-Rod Destroyer, which is the only bike on this list that gives the M109R boss's name a run for its money in terms of just sheer manliness. And with 125 horsepower and 84 foot-pounds of torque, that'll put some hair on your chest. While this bike certainly isn't the fastest bike on the list with only 144 mile an hour top speed, the V-Rod is a legend in the muscle bike community. It represented a massive leap forward for HD, and on a personal note, this bike right here is one of the reasons I bought a Harley as my first bike. The only real problem with the V-Rod is that they don't make it anymore. But with one hand, HD taketh, and with the other, they giveth 
the Fat Bob. Yup, the number one slot on this list goes to a Harley. Never thought you'd see this day come on the Yammy Noob channel, huh? Now, for those of you classic Harley boys out there, you might think to yourself, wait a minute, I remember when they dropped the Fat Bob back in 1979 and it weren't no muscle bike. And you'd be right. Like a lot of Harleys, the Fat Bob went through various iterations and gained and lost Fs and Xs and surnames until we arrive at 2018 when Harley unveiled a new face for its lineup. They killed the Dyna, they killed the V-Rod, and positioned the Fat Bob as their flagship motorcycle in a move that bemused and enraged a lot of rusted-on vets. But when you swing a leg over the Fat Bob, all the politics and BS of the Harley world melt away in a rush of torque. Take a quick look at this dyno chart. To the sport bike boys, you might think it's backwards, but that's the thing about Harleys, specifically the 114 cubic inch Milwaukee 8. It makes oodles of torque straight from the start. Sure, it all falls apart after 3500 RPMs, but for those few seconds from idle to redline, that big lopy V-twin will deliver 111 pound-feet of pure corn-fed American torque right to the rear wheel. Strap on your big boy pants, get ready to short shift and feel the rush. As for horsepower, don't worry about it, you're on a Harley. When the dude on a crotch rocket pulls up next to you at a stoplight revving that itty bitty lil 1000cc inline 4, just crack that throttle wide open and leave them in your dust. So there you have it, 7 muscle bikes ranked from best to worst. The proof is irrefutable based on feelings and bias all the hallmarks of a flawless argument. But since I know y'all are probably going to disagree with me, give me some of your favorite muscle bikes down below. I'm sure I left a bunch of them off the list, and hey, if enough of us cruiser boys show up, maybe one day we'll have one of them in the giveaway. Speaking of which, don't forget to head over to yamminoob.co and sign up. It helps us out, you might win a bike, so it's a win-win, right? I'll see y'all later. I hope. I don't know. Let us know if you want to hear more spite lists down below. Fact. Spite is not Jammy J. We are separate entities. Goodbye.